Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello there. It must have been very exciting when you were asked to make your first video production in your college or university. I'm very sure that you must have planned your film like this, uh, that first of all we will think about the idea, the topic that we are going to make uh, the film about, then we will do some research. After that we will write the script and we'll talk to our friends to act in our film and then we will shoot it for two three days and we'll edit it and that's how our film will be ready oh yes i forgot to tell you that you must also have promised to your teachers or professors to deliver the product by the next week but did it really happen were you able to deliver your product by next week if yes then congratulations to you and if not then why in the syllabus books you must have read about the production process there are some stages and then the details about those stages in most of the syllabus books there are three different stages everybody knows them it's uh, pre-production production and post-production now each stage with the what to do and not to do kind of a advice and how to go about each stage. Now imagine it for a second that uh, even if you are able to survive with this kind of a structure of production in your college, university or in your film school. Will you be making the same kind of videos or films or television programs? Um, in your professional life? Will you be making the same kind of programs? With each product we grow and with each product we imagine to turn it into a good film or a good television program or some good studio based exercise or even a thought provoking documentary. Now let me make a point uh, very clear here. I am not saying that these three stages are not useful. They are extremely useful, rather they are the base for any kind of a bifurcation. But what I am saying is that with, with the advent of newer technologies and program formats, the ever-changing competitive world of audiovisual production demands better understanding of the process. The recent tremendous development um, uh, um, the tremendous growth in OTT platforms have proved that people are always ready for newer kind of a content. So, there is no dearth of work, let me assure you about this. And I always say that people, those who are good with their craft, are never out of work. Even in a uh, tough time like these, when life has uh, come to stand still. Have you ever noticed that some of your classmates or immediate seniors have started working as a freelancer? And you must be wondering what's going on? How are they doing it? How is it happening? One of the purposes of this video is to tell you that when it comes to production, how limited people have been thinking about this topic. Allow this video to provide you some of the answers for many of your doubts which may have been bothering you for some time. Hello, I am Salim Javed and this video is about different stages of production and beyond. So let's get to the point and let me say that 
there are only there are not just only three stages of production be that pre production production and post production they are the most important most important of all but they are actually technically nine at times you will find the uh, 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 like five stages seven stages or 18 to 20 stages well technically speaking uh, uh, without any bias anything that you do during the process of making your film or any program uh, which means any audio visual kind of a content it is a stage in itself I am presenting you the best nine which can further be divided or broken down into numerous stages. For your convenience, we have been displaying three stages of the production from the very beginning of this video. Now, you can see nine stages of production that we are going to talk about in this video. We have retained what you already know, so that is the base, and added few more things to it. There are some stages which you may be uh, seeing for the first time or even if you knew these categories, you never thought it to be so important. The stage of pre-production is, um, as you can see that the stage of pre-production is having some more categories like finance and legal, crew and cast, vendor and suppliers, along with pre-production obviously. The next stage of production stage, uh, the, next uh, the next stage is production stage and it's sometime also called the principal photography stage. Well, it also means the production stage. The stage of post production has two more categories. One is edit and the another is deliverables, whereas distribution and exhibition are completely separate sections. Now. We will try to understand each and every section in this one hour video. I may change the order of the title bit for pushing the logic or pushing my point. I would like to talk about the finance and legal first. So finance and legal is uh, one of the stages which uh, has been included in pre-production. Now, when you were making your student production for the first time, did it cost you anything? Well, you can say, sir, it did not cost us anything. The equipments were provided by the department or the college or the university. We just went out the way we usually go and all the crew members had food together and we all contributed for it. So there was no burden on one person. Well, you are absolutely right. That's um, th uh, we all contributed because uh, all of us were expecting to make uh, our own program. So we uh, were thinking that if I don't spend, then other will not also spend. But trust me, if you ask the director of the film for whom you have worked, he or she will tell you a different story and how much they have spent. Uh, when you work with a professional crew, the number of crew and cast may range from 510 people to 300 or 400 uh, people. Where the money comes from uh, for managing and executing such a big project? Well, in case of a student production, it may come from family. You can ask your father, mother, brother or sister or you can use your own pocket money or you might have borrowed it from some of your friends. But think it in terms of crores of rupees or lakhs of rupees. If somebody's a family member is a financer, then it is a different ball game altogether. And, uh, um, but in, in this scenario, uh, that's being very tough, uh, maybe one in a million. Now, making film requires financing and lots of it. In the professional world, there are financiers, producers, banks, 
and money lenders. It depends on what kind of a situation you are comfortable with. Government of India finally accorded the industry status to Indian filmmaking business in the year 2000. As soon as it became a virtue from vice, now a legal business, business post-2000, the banks and many corporate companies, national and international and multinational companies, opened its gate for providing funds for this legal filmmaking industry. Many new model of uh, financing, particularly in Indian context, such as equity from the advertisers, gap and bridge lending, state tax credits, banking pre-sales, foreign quotas and subsidies, foreign tax shelters, state financing, um, things like these are now not uncommon to finance seeking individual or production company. After it was accorded the industry status in year 2000, the Indian film industry experienced a fundamental change in its system as the film industry was in the iron fist of private individual financiers or the individuals who were working as a proxy on behalf of the underworld. These involved illiterate individuals were only interested in the obvious outcomes like distribution and box office collection and other ancillary and surplus incomes were completely neglected by these people. If there are financiers, suppose if you are talking about financiers and if there are financiers, there are borrowers too. Then borrowers, um, the, the borrowers can range um, all the way from a single uh, purpose entity uh, doing low budget film to large studios. Financing which, which won finance for an entire, uh, entire year's film. There can be many films in uh, one year. Lenders, lenders range all the way from private individual lenders. If you are lucky, you may find one, but rarely it happens, I, I, I can tell you out of my experience, to um, large commercial banks that extend line of credit for crores of rupees to the studio. For organizations or public limited companies, those who have, uh, those who have large turnover and studios, Obtaining loan is relatively easy. They can either obtain large line of credit or they can use negative pickups. Under the letter structure, the bank loan to a specific purpose, entity formed to produce the film and the studio commits to pay the cost of the film on delivery, thus repaying the bank. For individuals and in, or for individuals or independent companies, those who have a small turnover, the transactions are more difficult and complex. In the absence of uh, some uh, form of equity or collateral, it is uh, advisable to first obtain pre-sale agreement. Now, though practically, practically speaking, it does not work in India. It only works in India in case when you have a list star cast and getting them for the individual or independent company with a small turnover um, is next to impossible. And after, but suppose if it happens, after this pre-sale agreement and the loan against it and together it with the gap financing for the balance required to produce the film you can really start making your film. What I have just said, it means a lot of paperwork. Unaccounted, uncounted visits to the bank from where you'll be securing the loan and lots of meeting at different five-star hotels. After lender and borrower, the interest comes in many different flavors. And in addition to interest, lenders typically are paid some upfront fee, usually expressed as a percentage of the amount of the loan. When I was doing films, I got into film financing and reached up to the level of executive producer for some of my last projects. 
uh, we will talk about the role of who is an executive producer what does he or she she uh, she she does uh, in the next video where we will, we will be uh, learning about the roles and responsibilities of different production personnel what i have just explained about the financing in entertainment industry is not even the tip of iceberg there is so much other than what i have just explained for a long time whatever we have just learnt for a long time uh, this information like uh, uh, any information about exhibition or distribution has been safeguarded information but with the advent of new technology new platforms now it 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 becomes slightly easy to learn about these things if we talk in terms of legal technically it means contracts traditionally the indian film industry has been social relationship centric industry under which the agreements and especially the written agreements was a thing of least importance it was a time when zaban ki kimat thi which means that what you have said are the final words and if there was any irregularity in the commitment it was solved mutually without any arbitration or litigation as it is evident from what i have just said that legal documentation and filing the paper was next to zero as far as the film legal document documentation is concerned today it is a thing of the past now for last 3 decades every deal is in black and white thus aiming to march towards uh, copyright and intellectual property right also the protection of copyright is given for the work which has uh, originality for example there should be an author uh, of the work and certain amount of creativity should be involved the author is the real creator of the work and hence he or she is the one who has the first right over the copyright even indian law establishes the first owner of the copyright is none other than author the definition of term ownership is inclusive where it can even uh, include assignees or uh, and a legal entity irrespective irrespective of it being defined under law whereas in burn convention there is no specific definition of the term author instead it implies that it is not necessary that a person who creates the work should always be the owner however the term author is defined under uh, indian copyright act with respect to different work but it has lot of ambiguity too post 2000 indian film industry saw a great rush of litigation related to almost every aspect of film making process in india matters of non payment of cast and crew above the line and below the line had the same complaints infringement of copyright and intellectual property right music theft uh, uh, breach of terms and condition in contract uplifting the entire idea without prior approval of the original content creator or copyright holder were some of the major issues at that point of time i will show you some of the professional 100% legal contract during this video when i used to make them i always used to say when you are signing the contract it's all happy and good and you sign it without reading it and throw it in some of the drawer of some cupboard and it remains there for ages and it only comes out when you have some sort of arbitration or some infringement acquiring the intellectual property right of the script or uh, licensing the ipr to producer or distributor or contracting the above the line cast and crew and licensing the movie characters music 
merchandising or remake. Uh, remake can be uh, about the sequel also and about the prequel also or it can be about uh, uh, some character uh, story offshoot kind of a format also. Production agreement to distribution, um, uh, production agreement to distribution and uh, the terms of agreement. There are so many departments and individual. It becomes a mammothian task for the legal team to bring all of them on the same page. Now this brings us to the next topic uh, of, th of this video which is basically cast and crew. So when we are talking about cast basically we are talking about actors and there are uh, different kind of actors like um, uh, whom you know they are called lead actors or a, a, a list of actors. So they are, uh, they are also known by the name of hero and heroine. So uh, they are a so they are basically uh, first line of actors or they are called the lead actors. Now when there are actors obviously there are casting directors also. Uh, there can be one casting director or there can be two casting directors. It depends what kind of uh, uh, where one can actually uh, bring in actors and other can actually bring in crowd. So we will talk about the role of casting director um, uh, in next video. Now there are principal actors, they are also called supporting actors or second line of actors. They are basically the father, mother or uncle and auntie. Uh, if you remember, if you have seen Hum Aapke Hai Kaun, so basically Mamu Jan Aate Hai, Wo Eid Ke Mokhe Pe Aate Hai Aur Unki Bibi Jo Hai, Wo Sharara Pehen Ke Aate Hai, which is also a stereotyping. Um, but they are basically uh, you know, um, they are basically a second line of actors, and uh, then you have uh, uh, bit 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 part actors also. So these kind of actors are those who actually get four or five lines to speak. Then you have body doubles also. So uh, there are times when actor the, the lead actor is not available and the shot has to be uh, managed. So a person who looks like the lead actor, you take a OTS over the shoulder kind of a shot and this is how we manage. Then we have got background artist. Um, and there, there is a difference between background artist and uh, uh, crowd. At, at places the background artist and crowd is uh, written uh, together but they are actually different people. If you remember there is a song Jiski um, Bivi uh, Lambi um, Uska Bhi Bada Naam Hai. So there is a man uh, uh, with whom Amitabh Bachchan is actually uh, singing this song and he is a very short hearted guy. So he is none other than uh, uh, famous film critic B.B. Nagpal and uh, uh, so he, he was there, he was there to report uh, uh, about uh, uh, the song and the shooting then uh, this line was there in the song ki jiski bivi lambi uska bhi bada naam hai and bivi nagpal is um, uh, is a is a, uh, like um, short so uh, bivi nagpal becomes the part of the uh, background artist and then obviously you have crowd so there are lead actors whom we call a first line of actors uh, casting directors because there are actors so there has to be casting director and then you have uh, um, supporting actors or second line of actors like uh, Bab, Bhai, Ma, Behen, Sister all these things then you have bit parts then you have body double then you have background artist and crowd. Now, now when we talk about crew because this is what is cast is and but when we talk about crew basically we are uh, uh, talking about the creative and technical uh, members of the team. So you have uh, members like uh, uh, producer, director, AD, supervisors, um, uh, uh, script, script supervisor, not supervisor, sorry, script supervisor, casting director, VFX team, sound recordist, uh, boom operator, DOP, his team, uh, production designer and his team, uh, uh, choreographer and, and, and their dancers, uh, then you have uh, editors and his, his, his team, light men, uh, food suppliers, spot boys, security. So they basically all of them uh, together basically they form this uh, cast and crew. But finalizing them uh, in the, in, uh, at, at the pre-production stage is really important. It's, it's basically meeting so many people. Now we'll I'll I'll talk about it uh, further. 
Now, uh, if you look at uh, another category, which is called basically vendors and suppliers, this is I think you when you read about cast and crew, you have some idea. But when you read the vendors and suppliers, uh, maybe it uh, it is uh, something um, that uh, you really want to know more. Now, who are vendors? Vendors are basically those who um, those who provide uh, equipments. Now, suppose if I want a, a, a red a red camera or any camera or black magic or some GoPros or uh, uh, 5D, uh, so there has to be a camera vendor. So who can give me all these options? So um, uh, when, when you go to them uh, and you fix the price, you actually talk to them and then the DOP comes and tests, uh, that's called uh, uh, technical recce also for the DOP and they come and test uh, whether the camera is working right or not. In the same way as you have a camera vendor, you also have uh, uh, a light, light vendor so it, it, it depends on the kind of a project that you are working on. If it is a small project, maybe there are limited lights you need so you can go to a small vendor. But suppose if it is a huge uh, uh, production where you are also shooting at night and it is outdoor, then obviously you need uh, um, more and more lights. With lights, obviously if it is outdoor, then uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, gen sets will come. Uh, and then uh, other uh, what what kind of a shot is that also makes a difference so other equipments like uh, um, uh, special equipments like uh, um, Jimmy Jib will come dolly will come um, uh, hydraulic crane can come um, hex hexacopter can come so it it, it depends actually uh, on the technical requirement of your script. So what kind of, the kind of a vendor is actually what the uh, script is demanding. If it is a huge product, obviously you need a bigger vendor. And if it is a small product, uh, if it is a small scale film, then maybe um, uh, some normal kind of a vendor can uh, do it for you. Um, so uh, sometimes maybe there is a chance that you need movable lights, uh, movable lights. Now movable lights is like um, uh, you really have to justify uh, why do you need it uh, because then your executive producers, line producers will be asking you why do you need movable lights then you can explain that because I have a long stretch and it is like one take kind of a thing so how many uh, source light will you produce for this long stretch and things like that so there can be many uh, reasonable arguments for the kind of uh, equipment that you have been asking. Then uh, it, when it comes to suppliers, now uh, there can be food supplier because if you are shooting with a crew obviously you need to feed them, you need to feed them properly. So there has to be kind of a, 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 a food supplier also. So uh, what kind of a crew you have, what big names you have, uh, what is the number of your crew, so how many breakfast, so suppose you need 300 breakfast or you need um, say 100 breakfast on, on, on some day. Maybe you need uh, 150 lunches or maybe uh, you need uh, 300 dinners. So it, it, it depends. The, uh, the, the, the supplier of the food has to be, um, uh, because there is no no when you are shooting actually. So you really have to check the background of all the suppliers and vendors when you are hiring them. And pre-production is the stage where you hire most of the people. Then uh, you your, your, your suppliers are uh, who is uh, providing you the security, who is providing you the spot boys, um, your line producer, um, uh, basically in India line producer, they invite uh, food suppliers, they invite security people, they invite uh, uh, spot boys. So basically the entire show, uh, when, suppose you are from Bombay and you come to Delhi. Then obviously who are the people who, who will be coming to, to Delhi? Uh, they will be directors, actors, important crew members. Obviously you will not be bringing spot boys from Bombay to Delhi. And uh, you will not be bringing security from Bombay to Delhi. So you will be hiring local security, local spot boys. Uh, you can bring a head spot boy from Bombay. But even after that you need more people to work on set. So uh, all, all, all these suppliers um, all these vendors really become very important because they really uh, affect your uh, budgeting 
in a very interesting way. So if you're not careful about your vendors, uh, what kind of a deal your vendor is giving to you, what kind of, of a deal your supplier is giving to you. So you really have to make sure that everything is falling within the budget because the budget is the guiding factor, uh, not only in pre-production or production, it is there uh, throughout its its budget is kind of uh, uh, blood which runs in the veins of filmmaking. So you really have to bring in everybody, be that supplier, be that cast, be that crew, be, be that vendor or supplier or be that technical team or be that uh, um, um, uh, te uh, creative team. Everybody has to fall with, within the budget. We'll talk about budgeting uh, uh, very, very soon. Now, uh, so after this, obviously a term which you know is basically pre-production. Now, at places you must have written uh, development. So, um, uh, basically it's about the idea generation and things like that. So, we are basically thinking, like suppose for this video, we are thinking that there is a story. I am a producer and I really want to buy your uh, story from you. So, obviously, uh, um, legal that we were talking about uh, just now uh, comes in place. Uh, on what terms and condition I am buying the story from uh, the writer? Is he the or uh, is he does he has the ownership of the script or not? So the things that we talked about. So, so, so all the buyings and hiring. I I always say this that if your pre-production is good, if your pre-production is good, then there is less hassle when you are shooting and lesser when you are editing. So, uh, if you look um, how uh, like other uh, film industries work and how we work, there is a huge difference. We do not spend time on pre-production. It's like we are rushing towards production. We just want to start shooting. That's what we do. We really are looking uh, forward to how the shoot start. Ho. Let's do it. And uh, there are times, I, I have seen it quite often, that there are times when people are not very active in pre-production stage, but they are so active when it comes to production. So, but that's not the case when it comes to filmmaking or any audiovisual kind of a, of a product that you are making. It's, it's not the case. Your pre-production is the most important stage as far as filmmaking or any audiovisual making is concerned. So the kind of a time, the kind of a planning you do in pre-production stage, it will save your money uh, during production and there will be um, slightly less uh, problematic kind of a journey when you are ed editing it. Now, what does uh, uh, pre-production has? So the writer is there, there is a producer, there is a financer, all that we talked about. Now everything is ready, money is ready. Now what we, what we do? We actually make a budget. How much this story is going to cost us? So budgeting becomes a very important part. Uh, trust me, there are no good formats of budgeting. The kind of formats that you follow, uh, that you happen to see on, 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 on internet, uh, on different platforms, when you use them practically, they actually, they do not fulfill the kind of a requirement that you are looking for. So you really have to, it took me six months to, to evolve a foolproof Indian budgeting format for myself when I started working. And it was like I'm running from pillar to post looking for a decent kind of a format. But ultimately, as I started working, I, I kept on evolving. And finally, now I have a decent, a very good, I, I mean, I can um, uh, 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 really, um, I have managed really well some projects on that format. Now, Budgeting is kind of a factor which is like you should not, you should never exceed. Because if you can finish your film within budget, you are a winner. And chances are that you will get next project very soon. Because it is a kind of a talk uh, in the producer circle also that who is able to finish films on budget and within time or not. So budget and 
within time these are two important factors when it comes to uh, pre-production then obviously because there is a budget so you will be scheduling your film this scheduling is basically the work of first assistant director now this first assistant director, we will be talking about the roles and responsibilities uh, of the, this first assistant director, second assistant director, third and fourth in the next video. There are rehearsals happening in, in, uh, in, in pre-production. Pre so if you are going to shoot a dance sequence in, uh, in, in production time, when are you rehearsing? You are actually rehearsing in pre-production time. So there has to be a scratch song also. And it means uh, the, the lyricist must have been finalized before composer, music directors, all these people, choreographer. 90, almost 90 to 95% of the hiring um, happens during pre-production. Uh, at times you will see PR written in post-production. But if you are shooting your film and if you are, uh, like suppose you have uh, hired a very good actor and you really want to publicize publicize it, you really want to create a buzz for your film. So technically, PR which is written in the post-production becomes a part of the pre-production. So 90 to 95% of activities, you really have to switch them on in pre-production time. Pre-production is the most important stage when it comes to filmmaking. This, this is a point which I have been emphasizing for a long time now. And uh, then uh, um, what? who is going to be any hiring, cast, crew, legal, uh, legal uh, financing, um, vendor and suppliers. So 90 to 95% of the hiring, uh, who will be the, um, uh, uh, who will be the storyboard artist, who will be the actor. So maximum hiring is done in the pre-production stage. Stronger your pre-production, easier your product it it makes your production easier now when we come to production stage will be what what we are basically talking about we are talking about that uh, suppose i we are shooting for 30 days now 30 days how many locations are there obviously this becomes a part of the scheduling how many days and nights are there this become part of the scheduling who uh, which actor is required at what location for how many days it's become the part of the uh, of of the scheduling and uh, are we shooting in day are we shooting in night how many days are there how many nights are there all the planning that was done is happening now so suppose if uh, i am from delhi and i really want to go to uh, rohtang pass uh, and i want to shoot uh, after winter because there is snow so how many days I am shooting, when Rotang Pass is opening, all this becomes uh, very important and how, how carefully you have planned your pre-production because production time is a go time. You really have to shoot, there is no, no, uh, um, no stopping because per day cost when it comes to production, per day cost is really high. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's lakhs of rupees. Suppose you have hired a very expensive location. Location search and permission is again the part of pre-production. Pre you only go, go there. Like uh, this, this kind of a page we get uh, when it comes to location permission. And uh, this is one of the actual uh, location permission. So uh, there was one project where we took the permission of nearby locations in one page only. So this is how uh, all these things happen. Now, uh, so uh, when we are shooting, there are call sheets, which is prepared by second uh, um, AD. And uh, then we are on location, or, uh, we, we can shoot in studio also. Uh, when you are doing your production, suppose you, your film has action and talk is both. I would advise that you should start with talkies and action later on. Reason being that it takes time for even, even for actors to come into their grooves. So once they are in their grooves, they then performing um, uh, action becomes easy. The rehearsal of the action again is happening in in uh, in pre pre production stage. So I'll I'll, I'll keep on getting back to uh, pre production stage. Now suppose uh, let me surprise you that uh, editor is the part of the post production. 
right if everybody knows it now editor is being hired in pre-production stage and he is on set he is not just only in uh, in the post production now he is being hired in the pre production stage now he is on set and basically preparing the rough cuts of the day uh, of which you have finished your shooting now suppose why why this kind of a, a, a thing is happening now in india reason being that uh, there are times when uh, uh, you can miss some shots which are really important as far as the uh, uh, narrative structure of the film is concerned so you happen to see whether all the shots are right or not on that day only obviously in night or, um, and uh, you can figure out whether you need to be on location on that day or not which basically for each location for which you actually create a buffer in advance in scheduling so suppose if I go to Rohtang Pass and according to the schedule it says that I have to shoot there for four days. Now if I am shooting talkies, so keeping a, the buffer of one day will be more than enough. But suppose if I am shooting action, then I have to keep the buffer of at least two days. So when it comes to production, there is no stopping. You know, you, you have to keep on doing things and you can keep on doing things with ease if you really have planned well in your pre-production stage. So shooting is like principal photography as I said is th this stage is also called principal photography. Here everyone is coming together, here everybody has to be in sync and everybody is just working for uh, for the film actually and and, and there, there is a different kind of a of, of, of feeling uh, that um, being on set is basically a different kind of a feeling and you you forget about the world so that's the kind of uh, uh, that's a kind of a satisfaction you get actually being on set but being on set can be a nightmare also if you have not planned well there are times i've seen out of my experience i'm saying there are times when i've seen people crying on on set because things are not happening so you cannot make them happen then and there because it's it's a, a bundle of so many things what best you can do, you can do what you can do, but you cannot do the work of other people. So, so, so planning, planning becomes very important. And in in production, it just that you have to keep on doing it. I was uh, uh, talking to one of my friends. He's though he's seen it to me. So he was saying that uh, he was shooting some uh, the, um, some uh, all the devis uh, um, in in hills. So he used to finish one Devi in one day, he used to travel, he used to drive himself, he used to travel throughout the night and then he used to uh, reach uh, next location because there was no time because it was production time. So planning thing has happened but now production time you really have to keep doing things and you cannot say because a lot of money. Uh, suppose if your pre-production has taken uh, the 30% of the money. Uh, rest 50 to 60 percent of the money is there in the production time so it's a very costly affair so really you really have to keep on doing things and uh, uh, you know after 30 days when your shoot is over you really have to make sure that everything is all right you have shot all the scenes everything is there and after that you reach to your um, edit stage now uh, there are different kind of ed ed editors. You have song editors, you have dialogue editors, you have uh, uh, action editor, you have promo editor, you have film editor. So that depends what kind of a project you have. I mean, most of the time th there are there is one editor, and uh, sometimes people hire a promo editor because they really want their prom. He or she specializes in promo. And uh, there are some people who specializes in different aspect of editing and uh, uh, you really have to find out before you finish your production all the possibilities of uh, reshooting uh, because if you reach your edit table and then you are planning to reshoot, trust me, uh, you really have to make a lot of explanation to the producer, to financiers, to actors, dates become a problem and uh, um, having the same kind of uh, crew becomes next to impossible because everybody has got uh, uh, his next project lined up. So reshooting is like sometimes it happens that uh, you are not shooting with the same kind of a crew that you shot your film originally with. 
so reshooting is a nightmare when it comes to uh, to editing because there is where you actually see the worth of a director uh, dop so uh, there are many uh, editor friends i have they always say ki here is where we get to know how well he ha- he or she has directed because there when you see rough cuts when you see uh, the rushes when you see uh, when you see those files you know there are so many mistakes continuity is a problem um uh, actors one actor is looking in a completely different direction and things like that and uh, um uh you know so many things happen now uh so avoid or not avoid but i would say, uh, say rather uh, plan it so well that you don't really have to go for reshoot because if you reach editing stage and the editor tells you boss i am not able to find this shot and because of that shot you or because of that particular reaction it is affecting the narrative structure of your film now you hold your head there is no other option other than this so plan well pre production is the stage where you you basically imagine every thing going wrong uh please understand um, uh, i i i am saying it uh, very correctly that pre production is a stage where you think everything going wrong and then you find out ways to keep everything on track so if you really have a backup plan for everything then production becomes very easy uh, so everybody is like as i said that everybody is only thinking about production 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 but no it's not the production it's basically the pre production which actually makes your product better and gives it a quality brings it a kind of a finesse in it and uh, you are able to exhibit better uh, you know whatever you have got to show to the world now when it comes to editor he basically creates a, 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 a assembly cut first so assembly cut is basically a kind of a um, um, all right kind of a shots are gathered together then it comes to rough cut where you actually ha- start seeing the film in some form then uh, you have a fine cut Uh, and then obviously uh, after the fine cut you have a final cut also now here is where um, uh, you really rope in many different uh, kinds of people you basically um, um, sound effect um, uh, you have a, a music director working on your uh, um, film you have color um, um uh, you have di uh, happening on your film you have lot of optical work happening on your film you have lot of vfx work happening in your film um uh, then you have uh, uh, adr also if you remember I, i i i i told you about adr in the sound video which is basically automated dialogue replace, uh, replacement is being recorded and added to the film so there is so much of work even happening when it comes to editing so uh, now let's talk about the deliverables or um, uh, in your book uh, you will find it by the name of uh, film lab and answer print uh, but this title was in uh, Uh, in very much use when we were using the physical film uh this is how physical films uh, look like um now we don't use the ter- uh, now we use the term deliverable which is more suited for uh, digital medium uh, with the last dying breath of film as a physical medium the digital cinema and digital cinema projection is taking over uh is taking over it is important to understand what do we mean by digital cinema digital cinema refers to the use of digital technology to display your movie on a theatrical screen india as per the kpmg uh, media and entertainment industry report has approximately 9600 screens of which 2950 are multiplex screens and multiplexes earn more than half of uh, indian theatrical revenues uh, 
There are many advantages of digital cinema including um, consistent image quality and reduced cost. With most movies now being shot digitally, an all digital workflow makes a sense. You can make 50 or 1000 copies of a digital print without a generation loss. And there is no potential dust or scratching uh, in the digital process, which means your 100th screening will be just as pristine as your first one. Now, let's move to the second last topic, which is distribution. In the beginning of Indian cinema, exhibitors and later distributors were the first to enter in film business. It means that before a director, cinematographer, editor or even an actor, the exhibitors and a bit later the distributors were present in India. There were many people in, this, in, in the beginning of Indian cinema who used to showcase uh, the foreign films in India much before we started making our own films. We have talked about this part and about all these important people in video 3 when we were talking about the history of cinema. A distributor is the one who is a link between producer and exhibitor. The role of distributor got enhanced after the considerable shift in the numbers of permanent theatre in India and also when the studio system collapsed around mid of the last century. It is the distributor who secures some rights from the producer in exchange of terms and condition of the deal between the two uh, after either at the star cast or on the reputation of the producer or after watching the final product. If the acquisition of the right happens before the production of the film, consider it as part of the pre-sale. It is now quite normal for a film producer to distribute their own films without a third party or an in independent film distributor. With the advent of talkies in 1931, six film territories came into existence. They were Bombay Circuit, Eastern Circuit, Delhi UP Circuit, CPCI Rajasthan Circuit, Punjab Circuit and South Circuit. As per now, there are 11 territories which have been created by film distributors for the releasing uh, of Hindi uh, films across India. They are now Bombay Circuit, Delhi Circuit, Nizam Circuit, East Punjab Circuit, East, uh, East, Eastern Circuit, CP Barar Circuit, Central India Circuit, Rajasthan Circuit, Mysore Circuit, Tamil Nadu Circuit and Andhra Circuit. Among all these uh, territories, Bombay Circuit, now it's called Mumbai, is considered by the distributor as having potential for maximum earning. So, the price of this territory is always the highest and the price of other territories uh, is decided on the basis of Bombay Circuit. So, however, Hindi movies in Nepal and Bhutan are released um, by distributors uh, through the Eastern Circuit. An additional territory known as Overseas uh, Territory also exists. As uh, we are also the part of Bern Convention, today every country is considered as one of the territories. Now let's talk about exhibition, which is the last stage. Now, where do we go to watch films? Well, most of us go to cinema halls. Now, cinema hall or, or, or cinema is a place where a film is being projected and exhibited. So, cinema hall is the exhibition hall for films. Who is an exhibitor? Exhibitor is basically the theatre owner. These theatres or cinema halls uh, are, they form the end of the uh, box office model. Under one of the model on uh, predefined agreement with the exhibitors, the distributor hire their theatres to showcase film. There are two types of theatres in India. One is single plex or single screen, another is multiplex. And both have different kind of arrangements with distributors. There are two factors for this uh, arrangement. Number one, total exhibition center and 
second and the return on them to be paid by exhibitors to the distributor. But India is severely under screen country and it is affecting the exhibition business very badly. When you see a single plex or a cinema hall or a conventional uh, cinema hall being demolished around you, trust me, statistics, statistics show that we are not compensating by erecting a similar structure. So technically, we are becoming a less screen country as per the population. Another very important area related to film exhibition is ticket price. Um, it's a charge that, that you pay uh, for entering in a cinema hall for watching a particular film. Traditionally, the money collected from the sale of these tickets and territory rights have been the two major uh, sources of film income. Now, as there are uh, newer ways uh, of earning from a film, the dependency on tickets and territory rights have reduced a bit, but still it uh, constitutes the major part of the film recovery. There is no depreciation as far as the value of tickets and territory rights are concerned. In fact, in a country like India, the ticket price is very, very important. As India is severely under-screened and most of the single-screen cinemas in our country are subpar or not as per the standard. Uh, moreover, Indian film economy is uh, splintered into several regional industries. Chances are that if I want to see uh, uh, a film like uh, Tiruda Tiruda, which was uh, directed by Mani Ratnam in Delhi, I will not be able to see th this film in, in any of uh, Delhi's cinema hall because Delhi is not considered a territory for Tamil language films. So what I mean to say that Indian film economy is splint splintered into several regional industry. I mean, which is a strength also, but when it comes to seeing it uh, uh, by many people, there is where we lack. Well, if I say the ticket price in India are too low, most of the people will not agree with me. But this has been a bone of contention for quite some time now. Above all, the biggest problem is piracy and um, so much has been written about piracy and so there are so many stringent laws that has been made. Even after so many efforts, the piracy is surviving and thriving in India. Now, in this video, we have talked about nine different stages of production. If you are making a professional product, be that a film, television program, documentary, or some advertisement, all, all of these stages will be there. All of us, when we, when we become professionals, we work only as one of the blocks in the entire system. We can be an actor, we can be a director, we can be a cinematographer, we can be a sound editor, we can be a sound recordist, uh, I was into production, and direction, whatever we are, it is important to understand the entire picture because it helps us to understand what kind of a difference our good work can bring and how ultimately we can improve the quality of the product. As I said earlier, that if you are good in what you do in this web value chain, there is no shortage of work. I hope uh, that the information provided in this video will come handy whenever you need it. And this video must have solved many of your doubts. I look forward seeing you in the next video. Till then, take care and stay safe.